Good everyone and welcome to today's Living Life. Um, as we begin October and as we begin a, a new section of Psalms actually, today we begin book four um, in uh, the entirety of Psalms. And there's a couple of interesting, or not just today but over the next couple of days, there'll be a couple of interesting, um, even trivia bits. And today's uh, is that Today's psalm is the only psalm that is attributed to Moses. It is described in the title as a prayer of Moses, and it kicks off book four of psalms uh, that covers from Psalm 90 to 106. And another interesting thing is the choice of this psalm um, to begin book four. Uh, right where they you know finished book three because book three uh, talks a lot about the crisis the crisis of faith um, and today's psalm psalm 90 uh, is a response to that crisis the catastrophe and the hopelessness of faith that people were feeling at the time uh, especially in relation to the fall of david's kingdom so we go right back all the way back to moses and his prayer coming out of egypt and the wilderness uh, and what moses was praying to god in response of the catastrophe and the difficulty of that time that will speak to people uh, during the time of the writing of this psalm but then even now thousands of years later to us this day so let's read the psalm and then we'll continue Psalm chapter 90, verses 1 through 17. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn people back to dust, saying, Return to dust, you mortals. A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Yet you swept people away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. In the morning it springs up new, but by evening it is dry and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. Our days may come to seventy years or eighty, if our strength endures. Yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. If only we knew the power of your anger, your wrath is as great as the fear that is your due. Teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, Lord, how long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen trouble. May your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendor to their children. May the favor of the Lord our God rest on us, establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. And so today's psalm, we can divide into three broad uh, sections. And the first one covers verses 1 to 6, talking about God's sovereignty. The second is verses 7 to 13, uh, about our sinfulness. And finally, verses 14 to 17, about the giver and the gift. And if we look at the first section, God's sovereignty, um, and I like you to, you know, get into the habit of highlighting and underlining, circling, and, you know, just almost doodling on your living life book or you know even in your Bible if you do not already do that. And some of the words that should uh, pop out at you uh, in this first section is words like throughout all generations, before the mountains, but the word before, everlasting to everlasting. Uh, even in verse three, uh, you turn people back to dust, the word back there, a thousand years. Uh, and then verse six, the entirety of verse six, in the morning it springs up new, but by evening it is dry and withered. Now this verse is talking about our lives, how we are like, you know, some of the, the shrubs and the little grass, uh, little plants that kind of, you know, rise up with the morning dew, but then by the end of the day with the sun, they, they are not strong enough, they are not big enough, mature enough, enough, and they wither and actually die. So these plants, are alive for maybe 10, 12 hours a day. And our lives are actually kind of compared uh, to that. And so in this section, as, 
you know, it talks about the sovereignty of God. It is the eternal nature of God, an attribute of God, the eternal nature. And, you know, I'm sure a lot of you have used uh, and heard uh, the expression, you know, one day to us, I'm sorry, one day to God is like a thousand to us. You know, this is where it comes from, one of the places that it comes from. But, you know, it's not just a thousand to one, because right after that <clears throat> reference, excuse me, it says a thousand years to us is, you know, a day, but then he says, or like a watch in the night. So a thousand years to us is also like a watch in the night to God. Now, what, what is that talking about? A watch in the night is a section of the nighttime. Watch as in, you know, people used to keep watch on the walls for enemies uh, and predators and so forth. And so it's a couple of hours that they divide the night into to take watch, right? Uh, to watch over the safety of the city and the town. One watch is basically three to four hours. During the writing um, of this Psalm and, you know, in the Old Testament days, it was closer to four hours. So, it's not just a thousand to one day, it's a thousand days, um, a thousand years, sorry, to four hours, right? So, you know, you can stop saying the whole thousand years to one day thing because it's, it's not a rule. Uh, let's not make it a rule. It's just that eternal, that immense, you know, just incomprehensible eternal nature of God. That is how high, that is how sovereign and above us God is. The second part is our sinfulness. So in the presence of such an eternal and sovereign God, who are we? You know, what are we? And, uh, you know, it's a little bit scary, negative in almost in a sense that the way this section is portrayed, because the words here that needs to be highlighted are words like anger, indignation, and this is God's anger, indignation, wrath, anger, wrath, um, and if, uh, fear in verse uh, 11, and then finally verse 13, you know, we cry out, relent, Lord. May you cease um, this anger and uh, indignation. Um, and that is because of the, the parallel words like iniquities, our iniquities, our sins, the secret sin in verse um, 8, and then even our moan, our trouble and sorrow. So the fear of the Lord, you know, it also says, says elsewhere, is the beginning of wisdom. And it is also the beginning of salvation. Uh, it is the beginning of faith. It is the beginning that we'll see later on in a little bit is the beginning of satisfaction, that God is to be feared. I mean, He is not just our buddy, right? Uh, in, the, in the modern church, you know, we have songs and, you know, we focus on the grace and we love the grace and that is completely true but at the same time we must not lose sight of the high kingship of god of how sovereign eternal and above us so different divine than us that he is and you know part of the problem is that we don't know our place right we actually uh, find it difficult to really grasp that concept of the highness, the, the, the sovereignty of God. And so we, we are rebellious. We live and act and, and speak in ways that go against that sovereign, kingly nature of God in relation to us. And this is what sin is, rebellion against God going against what God says and His nature. We do not fully understand and appreciate the anger that our sin caused God. But then the end, you know, is, is hopeful and it's cheerful because it says, satisfy us, Lord. As we begin to understand our place before God, we receive satisfaction. And that is because God chose another of His nature to overshadow this nature that I was talking about, the nature of love to, and grace to overshadow his nature of wrath and justice. That where we should die, he sent his own son to die in our place. The favor that it talks about in verse 17 is love. For God to show us favor, it takes love. Not just, you know what, I'm just going to give you a free pass. God cannot give us a free pass because of His justice, because of His righteousness. So instead, the love that covers everything is what gives us favor, is what opens the favor of God to us. But to really appreciate love, we need to understand the wrath of God, 
that comes from his sovereign nature. And I hope that is something that we will think about today. So as we begin to have the correct understanding um, of the wrath of God and our correct fear of God, we must also remember uh, that we have the love of God and we live in His love. And it is both at the same time. We have the both. And so to truly appreciate the love of God, we also need to have a correct and healthy godly understanding of the wrath and the need for the fear of God as well. They are together. Uh, at the same time. So today as we live and as we are going about our business and our relationships, let's be mindful of that need for the holy fear of God. And there is actually joy and satisfaction uh, there as well because we also have the love and we have the favor of God in our lives as well. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for your word that, has, that reminds us um, of your mighty uh, nature, Lord, your majesty and our place before you. We confess to you our sins. We confess uh, to you uh, that we are your servants, that we are your subjects, and we want to honor you this day with the correct fear, with the correct understanding of you and our place, Lord. So may we grow uh, in this relationship uh, that you have won and made possible for us to be the giver, but also the gift uh, that has made all of this, the favor possible to us. So we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. And it is in his name that we pray, amen. This program is produced by the listeners of the audience.